How's it going, Bladesters? And working to bring you specifications you can relate to. You can have an educated decision on your purchases. Seems like Friday is going to be my day where I have time to do live streams. So maybe I'll get into like a fidget Friday uh, type of thing. Let me know if that's something that you're interested in. Then I'll kind of plan for that. Maybe I'll get a time exactly that I'll do that for. Uh, but we'll see what we have. Uh, so this is kind of uh, a lot of people that have knives and knives collections probably has their land of misfit toys uh, where you have all these random knives that you have around you don't really use uh, for me they're in little ziploc bags i keep it up in my closet and every now and then i take it out to see uh, what i have in those bags and then we're going to do that today as well so we'll see if anybody comes on to the stream as well uh, most people are probably uh, not on their lunch break at this time might be driving home, so that's where we'll see uh, what comes on for this as well. But as you rest, as I'm playing in the background uh, while you're doing something else, possibly on the toilet, could be something that you're doing as well, but it's okay. We're gonna look at some of these knives as well. Uh, so I do have uh, a monster truck holding my other microphone up on the top side. Uh, we do have uh, Megalodon uh, that's up in uh, that corner there. Uh, but we're going to be waiting around, see if anybody else wants to join in. But we're going to talk through some of the knives here uh, as far as the ones that are my Land of Misfit Toys, exiled knives that kind of just stick not in my regular collection. So if you ask me how many knives I have, these probably wouldn't be in my number that I would have for how many knives I have. Drinking some coffee as well. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know as well. But we'll go through one bag at a time, kind of see what it is. See if this is of any interest to folks as we kind of uh, work through it. But um, as I started off, a lot of times uh, there's AliExpress, uh, DH Gate that was around. So some of these were from that time period uh, when I was buying those type of knives. Uh, this one was from actually a viewer from Minnesota. Uh, so I sent that along. It's a little multi-tool that you can pick up uh, for a regular souvenir type of shop. Uh, so that's something that I got. Uh, I still keep it around uh, because it was a gift. Uh, but it's not something I really put into use or actually use or anything. Uh, but that's one that I do have uh, from Minnesota. Uh, we have another one. I really like this pocket clip. Uh, so a lot of people don't. Uh, I'm not too sure uh, what the issue is exactly. But now uh, this pocket clip is pretty cool. Now this is actually is a collaboration knife uh, with CRKT. Uh, this is the Razel or Razzle. Uh, so this is one that is uh, Jim... John John Graham, I think that's the name. Uh, but this is one that Nick talks about a lot about as well. Uh, they have a pocket clip that's available for it. I took that off. It has this type of pocket clip uh, that goes onto the edge of the pocket. Uh, so this is one uh, that I like this pocket clip actually. I don't know why it doesn't catch on. Uh, some people have issues with it where they don't like the way that it looks. They don't like the way that it actually holds in the pocket. Uh, but that's where um, kind of we'll see about that. We have some people coming on and off, so if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Otherwise, uh, we'll just keep on moving along. So we got that one. Uh, so that's one that I just keep around. Uh, and then we have this one. So I like got this one. It's like a, I thought it was bigger than this, I, obviously, when I ordered it. Uh, but it has a little dragon insignia on it. It actually works pretty well uh, for this one here. Uh, but uh, this is one that is... Uh, one that I just I just keep it around for some reason. I don't know why, uh, but it is one that is a good overall design to it. It's kind of, I guess, it probably harkens back to a Chris Reeve knife in a way, uh, but it is a bit smaller, uh, So, um, but actually not too bad on it uh, for this one. And I forgot the name of it as far as the brand. Which brand is this? I haven't bought a brand this brand for a while. So... Darn, can't really see that too well. But that's a brand that I picked up. Uh, so another one that's in the, that little bag. Do you guys have any of those in your collection as far as just like random things that stick around? Uh, so this one is a 511 knife. Uh, this one actually came in from uh, Jack Farmboy. Uh, so I went and uh, got this from him. Uh, and then I forgot what knife I sent to him. But uh, this one I did sharpen up a little bit. It does have a little lanyard on it. Uh, not a bad knife. Now, this was actually one that I didn't really notice it before, uh, but that's where I actually uh, had uh, seen uh, this logo before. Uh, so that's um, Mike Vellenkamp. 
Uh, so he actually uh, does a lot of designs. He's one that actually had made this design. Uh, so he was with 5.11, a few other ones. He has V-Knives uh, that's out as well. And I think they have two retail stores uh, that's available. Uh, but there's kind of another one that's kind of out there. Uh, but that's kind of a somewhat interesting knife, not too bad. Uh, and then this is kind of one of those, uh, everybody had their little uh, knife that they compared to. So um, I think Nick has the Z Hunter and then uh, uh, for Birdshot IV, uh, they have this one, this Ozark Trail. Uh, some of you might still have it around. This is not a really bad design uh, for this one, uh, but if they would probably bring it back uh, with a little bit different action to it. Uh, supposedly G10 for the handle scale. It's like a three uh, CR for the blade. But these are when they're like a four or five dollar knife, uh, so they weren't really bad. But I just keep it around because it's kind of one of those ones that it actually was a pretty decent uh, for an Ozark trail knife. Uh, so if they were to actually bring this back, I think it would be fairly popular. Uh, it actually does have a pretty good uh, feel to it, a good shape, good ramp on it. Uh, but it's just one that I just keep around because it's like one of those classic uh, type of things that you kind of just look back on and say, oh yeah, that Ozark trail uh, 10 flipper. Uh, was really pretty decent uh, so that's one that I keep around as well so I think I have two of those one actually uh, has the design on it so I think I picked it up from Birdshot IV and then they went and sent it over because it was like funding their uh, blade show or something uh, so they went and actually did a design on it which was pretty cool so from the same person that I got this one from they sent this one along <laughs> it's a little tool as well a little hammer that you'll never probably use and a little multi-tool uh, but it's something that I just keep around as well so for those that you have those little bags of tools random things that are kind of out on the side those are the ones that i have for that and one that i'm actually experiencing with uh, that is uh, kind of interesting uh, crkt probably has some of the best uh, assisted knives that i've experienced uh, so now it actually is very quick very snappy uh, so really you know, something that's more automatic as far as the speed that it pops out on. Uh, so this one is more of that leather, uh, lever uh, type of action. So it does have kind of almost like a leaf spring that goes on the back. And it also does uh, flip out uh, for it as well. So it's almost like a flipper tab when it comes over that lobe. Now uh, that's where it pushes it out. Uh, so that is where it pops out to be about there uh, with that lever or that assist really snappy so if you do want to get into assisted knives uh, Sierra KT probably has uh, one of the better designs for it uh, for the assisted action but that's just something for that so I actually prefer it over the Kershaw in some sense not aesthetically no uh, but it is something that is kind of interesting so this is actually another one that is assisted uh, this is actually now one that I picked up before now uh, this is actually from oh man this lens is really dirty Hold on, guys. I don't know if that's better. Okay, that might be better. Uh, so this is one I got now from uh, the knife beater, actually. Uh, so this is an assisted knife. Uh, Kershaw uh, for that. Uh, so that's, as you see, for this one, as far as an assisted knife, it, it works where you can actually just deploy it uh, without having much uh, force to it, but it doesn't uh, have as much speed as you're going to get with the CRKT style. So this is going to be uh, this one here. So I'm not actually adding any force to it, but that's basically the speed that that knife pops out at. So it's not one that is going to fail on you. Uh, it's similar to this one. There's going to be the regular assisted knife uh, from Kershaw. So these are the ones that I kind of have. If you guys have any questions about these, it might not be a very popular topic, at least from what I'm seeing. Uh, but uh, this is one of the brands that was fairly popular for a while. Uh, then there was kind of an issue with it. This kind of where it spurred some of the metal uh, testing was Fura. Uh, this is one that now was from China. Uh, they were coming out with uh, pretty decent knives. Uh, but then there's a few that came across that their steel was incorrect uh, when it, we actually did testing for it. Uh, so now Fura was actually one of the first ones to kind of spur some of that uh, because the value that they're coming in at, this one D2 was really getting popular. And then uh, we're finding that there wasn't actually the proper steel for it. Uh, so that's going to be that one there. Uh, even for Camillus, now Camillus is one that I actually like you know, fairly well. I keep this one around. Uh, there's an Impulse 2. I actually like it a good deal. It does have a little bit of odd things for it uh, as far as... Now, this one doesn't have it as bad, but 
you get a little, a little bit of play on some of the uh, less expensive knives, uh, but that's the one that I, I enjoy quite a bit, even though it's tip down. Uh, but again, tip down is going to be a carry that you can go left or right. Uh, that's going to be kind of a good thing about it. Uh, and then another one that was kind of popular for the steel testing uh, was the LA Police Gear. Uh, so this is supposed to be the uh, least expensive uh, or one of the least expensive S35VN knives you can get. Uh, this one uh, tested uh, really low though. So it was like, a, I think like a 56 HRC. What's up, John? Just doing a random video. Uh, so hopefully now folks can enjoy it a bit. I've had people go in and out, so it might not be a popular topic. Uh, but this LA Police Gear, uh, John actually had one of these. I think it was tested a higher HRC, but the wrong steel, if I remember correctly for that one. Uh, but uh, it's not a bad one. It was going to be kind of the budget knife of the year type of thing uh, for it. But uh, once I found that the the hardness wasn't really good on it, some of the steels weren't popular or the correct one. And then also uh, the response I got from them was really poor, which was absolutely nothing. Uh, so that was something that uh, came about. And that's why it's in my little bag of exiled knives. Uh, so for the LA Police Gear, I actually don't mind it though. So the newer ones are tipped down, the older ones are tipped up uh, as far as the carry for it. But that's the one that you can still pick up. Uh, but they, yeah, they don't, they didn't really want to talk at all. Uh, yeah, 440, yeah, four, so 440. Uh, this one, the open L's I was kind of testing around on. So I took a quarter and then I actually bent it and then uh, glued it on with like a Gorilla Glue. Uh, initially it had still the pattern of the coin and then I went and sanded it off. So some people liked it uh, with the actual coin shape on it and then some uh, like it this way. Uh, so there's one that it was kind of a little project one that I was kind of messing around with. So that is a quarter that I attached to the end. I saw a video on it um, earlier as far as uh, somebody doing a project like this. And I really liked the style with as far as they had a aluminum cap. Uh, but this one I, I had, well, I have quarters, so I tried it like that. Uh, I don't know how it came out. Let me know as far as uh, what you guys think as far as that little a metal cap on the end for an open L. Uh, so still could do some more pattern work on some of the handle or something. But that's one thing about open L. Uh, if you don't have them, I mean, it's something that is that classic design. It is something that uh, still cuts really well. Uh, behind edge thickness on these are very good, uh, but it's it's a usable knife. So if you don't have open L's, uh, you can get them pretty much anywhere. They're normally about uh, 15 $20, maybe even less uh, for some of these. Uh, and I also have a one that I picked up when my kids were born, uh, and then I put like their birthday on it. Uh, so that was kind of one that I'll just keep around uh, as far as that keepsake uh, type of knife. Uh, so another 511. Uh, this one um, is kind of an interesting kind of dragon uh, shaped knife. Uh, there's one that is just, it sticks around, uh, lockup's pretty uh, light on it. Uh, so it's almost 100% uh, for the lockup. Uh, but uh, it's okay. It's not really the best type of knife that I could pick up. Uh, but that's what kind of why... It just kind of sits around. It uh, doesn't really do much for uh, the knife, but uh, that's kind of the one that I have there. Uh, almost down to the bat and last of the collection. I actually bought two of them uh, too. So uh, going back to the other one, so the LA Police Gear, I actually have two of those LA Police Gears, uh, both the newer version because they're both tip up, uh, but uh, that's where they're not bad. I mean, as far as the whole style on it and everything else, uh, but those are the ones that I have there. Have the Fura, some of those, some of those. I forgot what brand this is. I haven't bought from this brand in a long time. Uh, so this is ones that you can normally get from, uh, uh, was it DHgate, um, AliExpress. Uh, it's actually a pretty handsome knife. So it has a big old R on it. What brand is that? I just haven't bought from them in a long time. I know they're really popular still, uh, but hmm. I just don't know what it is, uh, but not a bad looking knife here. Uh, so this one actually is usable, carryable, uh, done pretty well, wood and steel. Uh, but those are kind of the ones that I have. Uh, do you guys have any questions for it? Uh, I know some of you might be just kind of wasting time. I may be white noise in the background, uh, but these are some of the live streams that I might try and do on Fridays because it comes out that I kind of have time to do those. Uh, maybe I'll try and work on an actual schedule for it. And then we'll actually get to actually see some other knives as well. Uh, but 
that's kind of the plan for that. And so I don't really have too much more to go through on these unless you guys have any questions about some of these knives. I uh, guess these are the ones that are in the random bag of knives that I have in the closet. Uh, but that's what I have. Also for this one, San Renmu. Yes. So that is that. So San Renmu is the one that is this one. And one other one down here somewhere. So this one also is a San Renmu. So it is popular for a lot of people getting into it uh, for the pricing. But also check out. Yes, yeah, the 10 flipper. Uh, so, yep, infamous 10 flipper from Walmart. Uh, so this is one that I keep around. Oop, and I failed it, of course. Uh, so this is one I keep around uh, just for that. Uh, I don't think they patented the shape or anything else. So I think this would actually sell uh, in this format, maybe a different handle on it, and then a higher flat. So if they took up the grind to a higher level, I think this would actually do pretty well. Because even for uh, the puncture area, it's almost uh, almost straight on with the pivot or with your thumb. So it's actually a decent shape. Uh, I think it would do well. I mean, you got to get the detent down a little bit better. Uh, but that is the 10 flipper, the you know, one that uh, folks look for, like three bucks or so. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so it's still floating around for some of the folks that have those available. Uh, but that's the 10 flipper. You got the LA Police Gear, Fura, 511, another 511, Razel. Uh, so I guess, what is your guys' opinion on this pocket clip? Because uh, this is one that I like as far as the usability. Uh, it also really hides the knife very well. Um, but some people don't like it. They feel like it, it twists in the pocket a little oddly. Um, but it's not really one that you see on many knives um, out there. Uh, so that's kind of something that is kind of just an interesting little thing. He still makes uh, the knives for it. Hey, what's up? So this is one that they make quite a bit. I mean, they still have their custom line uh, for these, but now that's the only time that I see this pocket clip is on the custom line. Um, I don't think, well, this got discontinued, I think. You can still get them though. They're still all over the place. Um, but it'd be kind of nice to get this uh, modernized, maybe with uh, less of a handle, because this is a very, very thick handle. Uh, so in comparison to, let's just compare it to this CRKT. So it's quite a bit thicker. It has that little odd lock uh, for it, uh, as far as that liner lock, uh, one that goes here. So that's one thing that actually locks it out. So if you worry about getting your fingers uh, that's where this one locks out, so you can't actually open or disengage the lock. Uh, that's what that is for, uh, but I don't like it. I don't think it's necessary, but if you want to get as close as possible to a fixed blade, I guess that was the point of the whole thing, uh, but I don't think it's necessary. So is there anything else that you guys have any questions on? If you guys have any questions about the channel or um, have any other things on these knives here, let me know while I take another sip of coffee. Uh, and then we'll kind of get along. If not, then we'll end it here, because uh, I just want to go through some of the knives that I had just laying around, something that is available, and then maybe we'll kind of continue on with some of the Friday live streams, and then we'll just have a regular review, uh, maybe uh, one other time. So I'll probably do two uploads. I'll get into the habit of doing that, uh, and that's shining pretty bright there. Uh, but we'll probably try and do that as far as a live stream Friday, and maybe an upload uh, Monday, Tuesday time period and trying to get into that and then let me know as far as what you think as far as that goes. What's the one of the bolsters? This one? So this is one of the ones uh, that's a Ducks, Duck Commander, Ducks Unlimited type of knife. Uh, Kershaw. Uh, model number is 7402DC. How's it going on your, your it's it's going. Um, it's taking longer than I would have liked, John, as far as my design. Uh, I just, they're trying to get the mechanism down because uh, it's going to be their first button lock uh, flipper uh, type of setup. Uh, so that's going to be uh, one that they're just, they're trying to get it right. Uh, I appreciate that as far as getting the, it, it, the mechanism correct, uh, have it not uh, drop out 
or have um, rock and everything else because some button locks just like CRKT I, I really like the CRKT button lock but it's a sloppy button lock uh, and they haven't improved on it uh, since like the TIETAC 2 because I have a TIETAC 2 and I picked up the new TIE Fighter the mini TIE Fighter uh, from them and it's just sloppy it's um, it works but it's just not great um, but that's what now um, actually the other question as far as what this one is uh, this one is that Kershaw assisted so this is assisted knife but it's coming along uh, they promised the four prototypes uh, by uh, Blade Show Atlanta uh, so I should have uh, my four prototypes by then uh, hopefully sooner uh, because I'm gonna want to get the prototypes into people's hands um, get them to do some, um, get their opinions on it uh, if it's ready to go uh, then we'll do a Kickstarter and then Kickstarter to hopefully production as long as it meets all well it meets the financial side of it because I don't have that much money just uh, sitting around so that's really going to be the plan but still planning for $75 uh, G10 scales uh, 14C 28N uh, for the blade steel uh, gonna have a colored pivot uh, collar cover colored backspacer that you can swap out to kind of personalize so that's going to be the plan for that also titanium pocket clip uh, fairly deep carry but um, most titanium clips aren't going to be uh, as deep carry as some uh, fold over or loop over clip so you're not going to find a, a titanium clip that has this type of loop over for it <laughs> yeah, yeah, detent uh, button locks in general, uh, detents are fairly poor uh, for most uh, detents. But uh, the M Tech knives, so I showed that on a previous video, uh, I'm very impressed with, uh, with their button locks. So their button locks um, uh, from that I picked up were like eight bucks, and I was really impressed with it. I bought more of them and just to make sure I wasn't, didn't have a fluke knife. Uh, so their detent are, are pretty well down, um, open position. Uh, something like two out of the five had a little bit of up and down, uh, but their uh, their tolerances were really good uh, for M Tech. Uh, granted, steel quality is three CR, so not great, but we'll do all right. Uh, but yes, most button locks, John, uh, have pretty poop um, detents, and that's kind of the downside of a button lock is they don't have the best detent. Uh, so you might have it where it fails in the flip open position. Uh, so hopefully we can get that uh, dialed in uh, for the button lock that I designed. And then we can go forward on that. Yeah, the Real Steel Griffin um, is one of the good ones uh, as far as that goes. It doesn't have a flipper tab on that one, um, but that has just a little opening. I have one of those as well. It's pretty uh, on point as far as... Uh, a button lock. I do also have a Medford uh, Smooth Criminal, which on most most of the categories is good. Detent is still kind of falls into that as far as a really light detent. And then also where they put the flipper tab, I just continue to hound on it because it really, I don't like where they put the flipper tab on it because most knives uh, have the flipper tab maybe even or above the pivot and then theirs is below. So this one's below too. But the detent is stronger on it where you can actually get a good flip on it. Uh, but there's is, yeah, the flipper tabs like down here and the tab itself is like a little itty bitty little tab. So um, you can definitely fail it on the Medford Smooth Criminal. You actually have to give it some risk to get it out most times, but it has good uh, tolerance level for it. Uh, so that's kind of the good thing about that. But yeah, Real Steel does excellent work. Uh, so um, I might, I mean, we'll see what happens to everything, but uh, they normally have, I think, like a 1,200 piece minimum order uh, if you go through Real Steel. Uh, so that's just a lot of knives to be uh, kind of hanging around uh, to actually have. Yeah, and so the Griffin, if it had a flipper tab, uh, it might be a good thing, but like that's where it's kind of a mixed bag as far as what people like and what people don't like because some people are like, they just are getting tired of flippers. Everything's a flipper, flipper this, flipper that. And then, but they want to have just the regular thumb stud. And then some people that have the thumb stud, they want a flipper tab. And then now it's going to like a top flipper, front flipper. Um, so there's all these different things around uh, as far as what people like and what people are actually interested in. 
Yeah, it is a little bit awkward. Um, I haven't handled, I haven't picked it up in a little bit, uh, but yeah, it's not as intuitive of a, um, a opening as some of the other knives could be uh, for that one. All three of those button locks, these knives. Or you want all three deployment methods. I don't know what you're talking about there. I think you're talking about deployment methods. So you want like a flipper tab, you want a thumb stub plus a top flipper. This <laughs> is kind of what I'm getting from that. I'm not too sure if that's the case. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that is what you're talking about. So the design that I, I made, um, it will have um, basically the flipper tab, thumb studs, uh, but that's going to be uh, the extent of that. Uh, thumb studs also will be removable. Uh, so if you do not want thumb, stu thumb studs, you can remove it, but you're going to just have a hole there. Uh, is Real Steel an OEM? Yes. Uh, Real Steel does OEM work. Do they actually manufacture all their knives for San Renmu? Because if so, they do a solid job. So if San Renmu is the parent company of Real Steel, um, the division of Real Steel does great. Uh, I still uh, really like the, uh, uh, what is it, the friction folder? Not friction folder. Uh, now I forgot the name of the lock. But the Luna. The Luna is amazing. The, if you have not experienced that knife, it has good walk and talk. Uh, for being, uh, what is the name of that? <laughs> what type of lock is that? It's not, it's not a lock, uh, but the Luna is great. Uh, so if you haven't experienced it, uh, then that's going to be the kind of the way to go as far as a slip joint. For a slip joint, uh, they are excellent. Uh, so they have uh, some of my Carter ones out there. They have the titanium, uh, plus uh, they do have... Uh, Oh, what is that? The carbon fiber. So Blade HQ is the carbon fiber. They have the titanium version. And then they also have a uh, micarta one somewhere, uh, which is kind of a cool thing. Layers of an onion. Are you talking about like donkey? So that's the only thing that I remember as far as an onion and layers and parfaits and things. That was kind of uh, Shrek. It's like, it's like, I'm an onion. It's like, it's like I'd rather have parfaits. So that's kind of what they're talking about. Um, I don't know where that onion comment came from, but that is what I remember, that people are onions or people are parfaits with multiple layers. But that's where I, that's where I really like these type of conversations. Once we get people on and they can actually ask questions, have conversations, get opinions from other folks as far as different things. Um, that's what I really miss about doing the regular review cycle is because I can put our video out there and then I kind of I get the comments that come in, but it's not really a real time thing. So if somebody has a question, if you feel I missed something, they can ask and then I can just answer it right away. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And even the actual company that now we get, so there's the American name, and then there's the Chinese factory name. Uh, so, so people that work in China, oops, dogs barking. One moment. Sorry about that. So I got two dogs. I got a miniature Australian Shepherd and a Scottish Terrier. Uh, so both of them are smaller dogs. I probably get a bigger one later, uh, but. They're good dogs though. But yes, a lot of different layers uh, for manufacturers. Uh, so they have the Chinese name uh, for their company. They have American name for the company. Yeah, hopefully. I know I don't get delivery. I'm kind of cheap that way. Um, I, I'd rather go out and get the food than have it delivered. That's just me, but it would be kind of cool to get a pizza. Uh, but uh, yeah, they have Chinese name, they have the American name. And then they might have a sub-American name that's the same company. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that you don't really know who's making what knife. Uh, but it, it, they still do a good job. So no matter who makes uh, the real steel knives, they do an excellent job with it. Uh, and then that's one thing that if you were to get uh, any of their knives, they're normally pretty consistent as far as their quality. 
and that's something that is really uh, quite good about that brand. Uh, so, and then I don't know who makes CRKTs either because CRKT uh, doesn't make anything. Uh, so all their knives are sent out. All their knives are somewhere else and they get made in China uh, and then just by some other factory. Uh, a lot of Gerbers uh, are made overseas. You still have the American one. And then also the, the Cleaver version of the Fastball is actually really awesome. So if somebody actually wants to pick that up, I would recommend that one as well. But cool, how's it going? Yep, a few people in. Uh, so whether you guys be on your lunch break, whether you guys been driving home or anything else like that, uh, if you have any other questions about things, um, I've hopefully uh, going back to John's thing. My knife will probably be here uh, before Atlanta in June uh, is their promise. Uh, so um, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, just getting more nervous about it because there's still other things I need to do. I still need to get the packaging done uh, and then I still need to get the name finalized uh, for the knife as well. Yeah, very good quality for real steel. Uh, so that's kind of the, the process of building your own brand. Uh, it's a lot of little things where it's like, um, even down to the packaging as far as like the box that you get it in, the graphics you have on the box, how many warnings do I need to put on the box as far as um, sharp object in box, don't cut yourself. Like I have to probably warn people like hot coffee. Uh, and so that's where it's kind of just interesting to see and looking at some other boxes to see, okay, well, what, what type of warnings do they give on the box? Uh, what type of warranty information do they have uh, with the knife? And that's kind of just things that kind of layer on themselves. Uh, so I'm waiting to get the design finalized. So I have the, the outside design, I'm working on the mechanism, but they might have to change a little bit with the design to make the mechanism work how we want it to. Uh, so once we do that, uh, then, then I can get the packaging done and probably work on a, a coin because I'm looking at doing a coin for the initial run, kind of like a little challenge coin um, because most people probably have clean cloths. So I don't think you need more of those. Uh, let me know if you feel that you need another cleaning cloth that I should have with it. What's the knife speed holes? Uh, there's a Fura. I don't know if Fura's still around anymore. Um, so this is kind of the one that kind of spurred a lot of the question about like, like, are we getting this right steel? Because they're they're stamping D2 on everything, and uh, most of yours uh, were not D2. Uh, there were still some that were, but uh, this one doesn't even have a model name on it. But you might be able to still find some Furas. Uh, a lot of these Furas were uh, direct knockoffs. Uh, so this one might also be a knockoff of a different knife too. Uh, so I guess let me know in the comments. There's just so many models out there. It's hard to keep up with. But this brand was kind of synonymous with knockoffs. So if you were to pick up on their knives, most likely that was somebody else's intellectual property. Uh, so that's where they kind of lost a little bit of their steam. Uh, plus they were given the wrong steel. Uh, which wasn't great because they do a pretty good job uh, with their knives. So, I mean, this knife's just held together by the pivot and then the screw in the back and it comes right apart. Titanium slabs, um, unknown steel, but I think they probably advertise it as D2. Uh, but that's what that knife is there for the speed hole knife. But that's what we got. I don't know what else I got. Uh, what other knives are you guys looking at now for uh, picking up? Uh, so there's still some that are coming out. Um, I still kind of want to look at the cold steel knife that has like three different blades you can clip in. Because a lot of those with the interchangeable blades, they kind of suck. Uh, so I think cold steel might do that properly. Uh, so there's one that actually has like three different blades that come with it that you can clip on. And I think it uses uh, their locking mechanism too, uh, which would be pretty awesome to actually see. Uh, but that's kind of something that is um, unknown, and I haven't actually pulled the trigger on actually buying one yet. Um, and then uh, Color Your Lover's Knife just finished out, so they did meet their goal. Uh, for that one, it was like an integral um, S35 knife, so I think you sold 110. They needed to meet 100 uh, from Bastion to actually um, have it produced, so his knife's getting produced uh, through Bastion Gear. 
uh, which is a good thing for them. Uh, I think that's his third knife that he brought out uh, through Bastion. Uh, so that's where uh, it's a pretty pretty decent way to go uh, for a knife. But that's going to be probably about all for today. Uh, if you guys like the lives, let me know. Um, I'm probably planning to do lives on Fridays. And then I'm thinking of, to go with the name Fidget Fridays. Uh, but I got to try and see if that works, if people will actually want that. And then I'll have a regular upload probably at the beginning of the week. So we'll do Friday lives and then like a Monday, Tuesday for a regular video. Uh, so we'll see how that works out for that. But let me know if that's something you guys want. I guess I could talk to nobody, but I'd rather talk to somebody uh, is my opinion on that. Uh, but thank you again for the time. Uh, somebody just popped in. So if you have any last questions, let me know. Otherwise, there's a little bit of lag between this. So if you type a comment now, I might get it like 10 seconds later. So I'm going to count down from 10 uh, to give you any last minute time to actually throw something in. Um, but we will. Oh, oh, dang, I missed a lot of comments. Hold on. Hold on. My comment thing wasn't going up. Speed holes, coin is cool idea, awesome. No more claws, good, that's what I thought. Yeah, tested at 8CR for Fura. Can't clean my glasses with coin though. Yeah, but you probably have more um, of those claws elsewhere or you have a, a hanky or something. Yeah, Jack's on, Jack's cool, awesome. I wasn't getting all these comments. Yes, that is your 511 there, Jack. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yes, live, Steve. Uh, but yeah, sorry, my comments weren't updating, so I didn't get any comments there. But we'll be ending a little bit. Uh, so if you guys have anything else, let me know. Otherwise, I will be going down from 10 to give you guys time to do that because there's a bit of a lag uh, for everything. Uh, but going down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Nobody. So have a good time. Appreciate it. Uh, have a great day. Check out for my knife before um, Blade Show uh, Atlanta. I should have my four prototypes by then. And thank you very much for checking in having a conversation, and we will check on that later. Bye-bye.